Hello everyone and welcome. Make a cup of your favorite drink and get comfortable because this is a wonderful time for new stories from Yellow Cat. Send your own stories in the comments below and maybe they'll be in our new video. Hiring managers of Reddit. What was your most WTF is wrong with this person moment you've had during an interview? I was performing a video interview with a candidate. They were clearly in a large room slash bedroom with most of it visible in the background, but it was clean so I didn't mind. In the back right corner was a closed door. About seven minutes into the interview, I see the door open slightly and some dude poke his head in, see that his roommate slash girlfriend was in an interview, then close the door. Not a big deal, it happens. I ask my next question and let the candidate respond. But then, about 30 seconds later, I see the door slowly open again. This time, the dude comes crawling out the bottom. He continues to crawl across the floor, making his way to the opposite side of the room. I assume he thought he was out of the camera FOV, but he was clearly visible. He gets to the far end of the room and turns to fiddle with something A in the air facing the camera. Finally, he finishes up with whatever he was doing and makes his way back and out the door. I know I should have stopped the candidate and had her deal with the dude, but it was so funny to watch I had to let it play out. I could barely contain my laughter and after the interview finished, I lost it. She got the job though and from what I remember was a great employee. Did you ever tell the employee about it after they were hired? I did actually. She confessed that she knew what was happening. She could see the dude on her camera. She was so mortified and embarrassed, but wasn't sure how to react in the moment, so she just ignored it and answered the question. I told her it was one of the most hilarious things I'd seen in an interview. Hiring for a senior dev position. Had a telephone interview and she seemed confident and competent, so I flew her down for an on-site interview. She calls, not me, but the front desk reception and says she can't drive in a big city and needs a car to pick her up and she refuses to get the rental car we reserved before Uber slash Lyft. Call is transferred to me and I tell her to take the train, Atlanta, Marta, no, she says, too scary. I tell her to go to the taxi and take that. Nope, afraid of taxis. She wants a corp limo to pick her up and nothing else will do. She is adamant. I put her on hold, have a chat with my boss who says just send her home, she's too much work if she can't even handle this. I tell her thank you for taking the time to fly down but not even our own VPs get that treatment and to go ahead and change her ticket to fly home now. She then starts telling me she will take a taxi etc. I said please don't bother, it will be a waste of everyone's time, thank you, goodbye. Not once when setting up her travel plans did she say she needed assistance getting from the airport. It was explained to her she would pick up a rental car at the airport. She was fine with it. No idea WTF she was thinking, but ain't nobody got time for that nonsense. When she listed all of her ex-boyfriends that currently worked there and said she couldn't wait to see the look on their faces when she showed up to work. This was in the first three minutes of the interview, so I wasn't even close to offering the job yet. I cut the interview right there and sent her on her way. You didn't invite her back for a second interview by a panel of her ex-boyfriends? How did you resist? Honestly, the thought crossed my mind and in that office, it would have been widely appreciated. We were looking for a sous chef that would be able to work and train for a few months and then eventually fill my shoes as CDC as I was leaving in about six months time. We were a big, very successful restaurant in a super competitive city and had a ton of applications and interviews. Most interviews for a chef position include a pretty informal chat with a hiring chef, the owner and the general manager, and a cooking slash tasting portion where the interviewee plans a menu of five or six dishes and serves them to the interviewers. One guy came in and killed the interview and served incredible dish after incredible dish. But the owner didn't like him because the guy interviewing was tattooless and 50 plus years old and he felt that this guy's age wasn't conductive to our hip late night vibe. Whatever, you do you Jeff, you insufferable pee. 
The owner calls me a few days later and tells me that he found a guy that he wanted to poach from a small bistro just outside of town. This guy comes in and is super cool, fresh jacket, oozing confidence, and a ton of cooking tattoos. The owner is in love and I'm hoping that this guy is into overweight guys with chef jackets that are two sizes too small. Before the interview, all candidates had to send over an ingredient list so that we could order any ingredients that they may need for the cooking portion of the interview. And this guy had requested some foie gras for a dish he said had been awarded time and again, a foie and lobster crepe. Didn't sound very good to me, but I was willing to give it a shot and see how it went. After the meeting, the guy went into our kitchen and started cooking. After about 10 minutes, we all hear the guy screaming at one of our prep cooks to slice him some chives. A few minutes after that, he brings out the app, which he says is his take on shrimp and grits, something that is already on our menu, and that he says is better than ours. I point out a few things. The shrimp is overcooked, the grits are gluey, and the chives he was so stressed out about weren't even on the plate. He tells me that the problem was our prep cook didn't speak English and that when he was chef, he would make sure the entire BOH staff was fluent. Holy S, warning bell number one. After two more dismal dishes, he tells us that he is going to make his famous crepes. I am effing pumped because I know that it is going to be an absolute S show. The dude is in the kitchen for at least 45 minutes, screaming, cursing, and throwing us around. I go back into the kitchen to see what the guy is doing, and he is fiddling with the Vitamix, which looks like it's full of cock. I ask him what's going on, and he tells me that he's just blending the crepe batter. I point out that crepe batter usually doesn't have the consistency of modeling clay, and he pretty much tells me to F off, and that his dish has won awards. I look over at his phone, which is out on the table, and see that there is a recipe from allrecipes.com for crepes pulled up on it. So, not only does this guy not know how to make his signature dish, but he can't even follow a simple effing recipe! He brings his dish out, and it's a effing mess. Burn foie, rubbery lobster, broken burmaise, etc. The concept sucked, but the execution was somehow even worse. The crab itself, though, was a culinary abortion. It was as if someone had given a lump of grey Play-Doh a pap smear. I straight up told him that it was one of the worst things I've seen produced in a kitchen, and he pushed back saying that it would have been great if my staff had given him the support he needed. Despite my protests, we hired him. The owner thought that he was cool and projected the kind of image we needed. He lasted about a month before I threw his A out of my kitchen, which the owner never forgave me for. I called the old guy that killed the interview and offered him the job, and he essentially told me to get bent because he knew he deserved the job in the first place, and he was right. She was a lazy liar. Hiring a business intelligence analyst. There are a variety of ways to get into this profession. I'm open to many of them. Frankly, if you have a good head on your shoulders and know even basic SQL, I can probably work with you, though lately I've had to get pickier as our projects have become more complex. This woman is mid-40s, boisterous personality, and seems like she'd be a good organizational fit. The problem is, she keeps lying but only halfway. Do you know SQL? Oh yes, I have years of experience with it. Great, so take a look at this code. This is the sort of thing we do. What's this? For some reason though, the most egregious lie that stands out in my head with her was when she commented, when I suggested she not take a particular route to the train station because it was dark and potentially unsafe, also I was headed to the same station and did not wish to commute with her, that she had a black belt and had practiced martial arts for years. Oh cool, what discipline? I don't remember. I interviewed a gal once, and while we were talking, I was looking over her resume. Please note that English is her first language, or else this wouldn't have humored me so much. Her mission statement on her resume was as follows. 
Along with my detail-oriented and organizational skills, I will bring Encourage Team to work cooperatively and creatively to provide an understanding the visual aspects of our work. This was for an admin position at a law firm. Not sure what the visual aspects of our work entailed in this position, honestly. I read it over five or six times, worried that I was having a stroke, so I didn't really hear much of anything she said during the interview. I haven't been able to make sense of it no matter how many times I read it. I actually cut it out of her resume and have it sitting on my desk some 15 years later. Me. I see you managed the vegetarian restaurant. Interviewee. What? Me. It says here you managed the vegetarian restaurant. Interviewee. Oh, I guess I did write that. Not really though. My girlfriend had an art exhibition and I organized the sandwiches for the opening. They were vegetarian. This was a candidate that was otherwise pretty impressive seeming and had been among the favorites for a quite sought after position. The interview had even gone quite well up until this point. Met him later at a party. He had no memory of me. We have a very simple pre-employment test. If you have been in our industry for more than a year, you should get 100%. Sometimes we even give it as an at-home test. We had one guy that took his test home, had it for over a week. He brought it to the formal interview and got 90% of the questions wrong. Even though, according to his resume, he was an all-star and knew everything. He had an excuse for every wrong answer even to the most widely known questions in our industry. It would be the equivalent of saying you have been laying sod for 20 years and then put the green side down. He didn't get the job. I set up an interview for an acquaintance's nephew with a company looking to hire 30 college students for summer work. The nephew's major and the line of work this company performed seemed to mesh perfectly, and I knew the hiring manager personally, so it seemed like a great fit. A couple weeks later, the acquaintance emails asking about the job. So I hit up my hiring manager friend, and the conversation went something like this. Me. Hey, how'd the round of hiring go? HR. Great. Needed to fill 30 spaces and only had to do 31 interviews to fill them. Me. Oh, cool. So, Paul X, one of them? HR. Oh, him? Yeah, well, uh, he was naked during the interview, so we declined. Me. What? Are you serious? I find it hard to believe he would show up to an interview nude. HR. Well, it was a Skype interview, and when we brought up his video feed, he was lying in bed nude. Me. Oh, well, maybe he thought you couldn't see him. Maybe he thought it was just an audio meeting? HR. We told him we could see him, and he said sorry, then covered up with a sheet. We asked if he wanted to reschedule, and he said no, he was good. So, yeah, we decided to pass. Sorry, Paul. The real funny is the fact that they only had to do 31 interviews to fill 30 position, making Paul the only one that didn't get the job. Literally, all he had to do was be well dressed. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing, the likes, and the comments. See you in the next video.